Hi guys, um, let's have a talk about um, short circuit tracing and uh, voltage injection. So this is uh, quite an old uh, motherboard, it's a socket 775, um, which has got an interesting fault on that's relevant to what we're going to look at today, so it's as good as one to practice as any, yeah? I mean, really, there's nothing that you would need to learn to fix modern motherboards, but you can't really learn by fixing old ones. You know, the techniques are the same. The same graphics cards as well. You know, uh, if you want to learn how to repair the latest stuff, then learn how to repair the older stuff first. Uh, you know, it's cheaper, and you're going to make mistakes without a doubt as you learn. As you learn, and as you get more confident, you can move on to the you know the more interesting stuff. Sorry, the more interesting stuff. Yeah. So. The problem with with this motherboard is there's a short circuit on the 12 volts. So you've got the 12 volts coming in here. And we can see that whichever pin we go on to is really short to ground. Now normally, two of them will be ground anyway. And we may also have a short, we can have a look on the uh, 12 volt ATX coming in here as well. I can never remember which colored wires go where. so. What I would normally do is just plug a, a power supply into it with, with no power on, just uh, or, or even an old lead, yeah. Just stick the uh, stick the thing in, and then you can have it to see if there's also a short here. So we can see the yellow wires now if we're interested with the 12 volts, and we can have a look. Yeah, so let's uh, see. Well, we can check them all. Why not? So is there a short on the 12 volts here? No, that's reading the resistance. I'm on diode mode, so let's go to normal uh, resistance. Yeah, actually, I was. I was on resistance mode, not diode mode. So we're reading like a resistance there. Uh, we can look on the 3.3. We're reading the resistance. We can read on the 5. We're reading the resistance, yeah? So the short is basically over here. Yeah, on the 12 volts coming in. On the E80X, as they call it four eight wake adapters that you find here okay so that's what's wrong with it so let's have a look at the different methods we can use to, to fix it yeah let's see if we can find the short circuit now usually the short is going to be somewhere in the vrm so i'll zoom down on this area of the board and we can have a look at this one we can see what we've got so on our board here, we have three voltage regulated modules, three phases, if you like. So here you can see we have input capacitors, yeah, a pair, another pair. We have MOSFETs, these will be the high side MOSFETs most likely. And then we have a pair of MOSFETs, which will be the low side MOSFETs and the coil. Yeah. So these two capacitors, these three MOSFETs, this coil and these two on the output, that effectively forms one phase of the power supply. And the same here again, so we've got two input capacitors, probably a high side MOSFET, a couple more low side MOSFETs, a coil, and these will be on the output. You can tell pretty much because these capacitors are rated at 2.5 volt, whereas the input to the um, book regulator, if you like the phase, will be, will be 12 volt. So these capacitors, if I just get them where we can see them, if we need to focus or not, I might have to adjust it. You can probably, you can probably see it anyway. It's saying 16 volts, yeah, so these are 16 volts. So these are your input, and you can tell the input by the voltage, basically. In fact, there's another one here, yeah, there's a, an extra one. I wouldn't worry too much about that. So that's what we basically have here. This might be an input inductor, so effectively the 12 volts comes in through the inductor and effectively onto these. Uh, and we can have a look. So we've got a short on these anyway, but if we go from here, this should go, and I'll just put the meter on where you can see it, so just one moment. But let me just arrange the other camera, you'll be able to see it better. There you go. So, the input coming in uh, will go to the top of these MOSFETs. This is where the 12 volts normally comes in. Now, obviously, there's a short on this one. Yeah? And you'll notice I haven't got the CPU fitted. So, where are we reading the short? Well, first of all, let me actually put a CPU in so I can I can demonstrate this to you. So, I'm just going to put a CPU into the socket. Okay. Let's get the right way around here. Yeah, there we go. Okay. 
put a CPU, it's a dual core CPU. We've still got a short here, and that makes no difference. Yeah. Now, the bottom side of these two MOSFETs goes to the high side of these. So effectively, this point, yeah, these two points, and one end of the coil are all connected together. And the other end of the coil, and these capacitors, is on V core. So the resistance we're seeing here is the resistance of the CPU, which is the load, yeah? And we can prove that on the desktop motherboard because we can easily remove the CPU, therefore removing the load, yeah? And we will see that that resistance there now is high, yeah? What you notice, we have no short here. I'll draw this out for you on a piece of paper. And while we're at it, let's just have a look at this last one. I want to see if this is also part of the V core, if this might supply the, the RAM. I don't think it does, I think it's part of the V core. So we should see the same resistance here on the junctions that we saw before. So we put the CPU back in, okay. On the junctions, and I think, what was it, 14 ohms or something? Yeah, 14 ohms, so that's the CPU. This is V core. This is the bottom end of this high side, the bottom end of the high side MOSFET. Yeah. So again, this, these two, this coil are all on V core, and this is the 12 volts coming in, and this is where we see the short. No. We also have down here. This will be the supply to the RAM, and again, we can prove this by putting the DIMM in. I'll just get a, a suitable memory module. Okay, there we go. So this board actually takes DDR3, some socket 775 to DDR2, depends on the age of them. 775 was around for quite a long time, from uh, Pentium 4 right up into the dual and quad core, core 2. Not, yes, core 2. Okay, so this is another VRM. If we look here, it's very similar. So we can see input capacitor, yeah, three MOSFETs, coil, and this will be the output capacitor, which says six volt. Yeah. Um, there's another little coil here, which I think is probably again just a filter on the on the input. So let's have a look. So from ground again, one end of this. Now you just need to find it. One end of this will be the top of the high side MOSFET. It's probably this one, and then this is probably the other side, which will go to this, which will go to these tabs. So if the tabs on these just measure the resistance about 200 yeah about 200 and probably the other end of this as well about 200 so these are all reading the same resistance and these go to the coil and the resistance i'm seeing will be the memory the other side of the low sides will see ground so that's to be the gate so i would say that, that this is yeah so this is the other side is ground okay so that, that's a normal regulator again if we take the memory out and look on these tabs again. It's reading higher now, yeah? So the 200 we could see was, was the memory. So we have another one there, but you'll notice on this one, from the high side, we don't have a short. There's no short here. This one will almost certainly be going to the 12 volts coming here somewhere. If I just remember which pin was which. I would have thought it was, I mean, I don't know for certain. Wherever it goes, there ain't a short on it yet. It could run from one of the voltages, maybe five volts. But there's definitely not a short on here, okay? Now, if you look across the board, we have yet another one here. Again, we can see three MOSFETs, a coil, some output capacitors, 2.5 volts. These are input capacitors, these 6.3, so I'm assuming this must be running from the 3.3 or 5 volts in, yeah? And again, we can see the similar thing. So this will be the top of the high side MOSFET and there's no short, yeah? The output of this one is reading 15 and we'll see the same on these. Yeah? That's the top of the two low side MOSFETs and the bottom of these will be ground again. So the 15 we see in here, in this case, we can say confidently we'll be powering e probably the PCH, this, and maybe this, yeah. But I would say this, Northbridge as we call it, which 
I mean, this is separate ones, and this is a fairly old generation board. But I'm going to draw a bit of this out on paper, and we can just discuss where we think this short circuit is, and a couple of important points, yeah? But it does appear that the short is only around here, but it's on the input to these um, phases, this book regulator, and not the output. Okay, let's get a piece of paper, and let's have a look. Okay, so we often find this sort of arrangement on graphics cards, on motherboards, laptop motherboards in particular. So what you'll have here is often is a voltage supply coming in. In our case, 12 volts. Yeah? On a laptop, often 19 volts. Uh, on a GPU, you'll have a number of 12 volt supplies. And this will supply often a number of different book regulators. Now, a book regulator basically looks like this. So from the 12 volts or 19 volts, whichever, you'll have a MOSFET, another MOSFET, and then usually two of these, I'll draw the one in a moment, go into ground, okay? No volts. Two in series, and from here, a coil, and this supplies your load. So here we have a capacitor, or capacitors, these are your output capacitors, like the ones that have with 2.5 volts on the v core, yeah? And then this goes to the load. Now, that could be the CPU, it could be part of the GPU, so this is v core, yeah? For example, it could be something else. Usually, on the low side, there's another MOSFET here effectively wired across the first one in parallel. Let's put the gates on them, then you'll see them. So this is a MOSFET. This is a MOSFET, yeah? And the two gates quite often have a, a low value resistor in each one, joined together, and these will go to your controller. Your controller IC, your VRM controller, yeah? Your VRM IC. And this IC effectively also the high side, yeah. Here's your controller, oh, so they are. Messy diagram, yeah. And this controller will switch these alternately. And you've actually by doing that and controlling the amount of time the high side is turned on to the amount of time the low side is turned on, switch at a very high frequency, it generates the correct voltage here. Okay. But what you'll also find is from the same supply rail, it's quite possible that you've got more than one VRM. Okay. Another coil. I won't bother draw the other low side this time. Go to some other controller. Yeah, I know I've drawn the two together. I shouldn't have done that, should I? There you go. <laughs> okay. And you may have several of these, and on here, there's a load. So, for example, on the GPU, you can have V-Core. Huh? You can have voltage for the memory control. Yeah? You can have voltage for PEX. You know, all these voltages will supply the GPU. On our board, we can have voltage for the core processor, voltage for the RAM, voltage for the PCH, Northridge. Okay? Now, the problem occurs, and just to complete this, by the way, this is where you find your input capacitors, yeah? Off here. These are the ones I said were the 16 volt ones, yeah? The problem occurs when you have a short circuit on here. Yeah? Short circuit. And you might be tempted to think, well, it's a 19 volt rail, or it's a 12 volt rail, so I'll stick 12 volts in there, or I'll stick 19 volts in there. And I'll wait to see what gets hot. Yeah? And you might think that's a reasonable way to do it, but it isn't. And the problem is this. These are what are called the high side MOSFET, yeah? These are what's called the low side. And the same here, this is high side, this is low side, and so on, for all the different voltages. If you have a short circuit here, on one of these, then effectively what happens is the 19 volts or 12 volts come straight through here, straight through the coil and straight into the load. 
vCore, vMemory Control, or whatever it is, vCPU. And the CPU, the, the core of a GPU, the various things, are probably designed to run on something like 1.1 volt or 0.9 volt or you know 1.2 volt. The memory uh, will be designed probably be 1.35 volts or 1.5 volts. Yeah. And if you've got a short circuit high side MOSFET somewhere, you are now sticking your injected 12 volts, 19 volts, straight in via the short circuit MOSFET into the load. And this is what's going to get hot. Yeah, this is what's going to get hot because it's not meant to run on that voltage. And as it all you're going to get hot, the chances are you're going to destroy it if it wasn't destroyed already by the fault, which it may well not have been because when this goes short, the controller is also switching this as well. It will turn this. And the controller will detect through a signal here called phase. Yeah, phase. The controller will detect that this MOSFET didn't switch off. Didn't switch off. And it may well be designed to switch this one on. So you know you have to get a short directly down through here, not into the world, yeah? So this is why you need to be careful about injecting voltage. So how do we get around it? Well, the answer is to stick into here something like 1 volt yeah, or 0.9 volts on a GPU yeah 0.9 volts to 1 volt yeah in there and then go and measure on each of the coils that you can find to see if you find any voltage there if you do find any voltage there so in fact you've got 0.9 coming in here there'll be a bit of wash down the wire and a bit of wash down through the PCB tracks and you might end up with like 0.7 volts here. If you see something like that, so there's a voltage on the coil, you know that you're going to be looking at short circuit on the high side MOSFETs. And you need to check all the voltage rails, yeah? Now, on our motherboard, it's a little bit different than that because we can remove the RAM. So effectively, we can remove that load. We can remove the CPU. Okay, on a laptop, you can't do mostly. On this, we can remove the CPU. So it's easier to narrow it down. But you can't remove this easily. Yeah. So you need to beware about short circuiting the high side MOSFETs. And the way to find them is to inject a safe voltage. Yeah. Okay. Now, our board has a slightly different fault, but I did want to point this out. In the case of our board, if we look, the short only exists here. Or here, if you like, the 12 volts coming in, yeah? The short exists here. If we go to the other side, onto the top of the low side, so we just see the resistance of the CPU. If we take the CPU out, we don't even see that, yeah? So our short is actually here. And this is a slightly different matter. So in our case, we have a short, use a different colour pen. We have a short directly from here somewhere to ground. Yeah? That's our short. So in our case, we could stick some more voltage in this if we need to, to try and pin this down. And the best way to try and pin this down is to inject voltage and see what gets hot. We can check first, although I, I know there won't be any, but let's just check it to prove the point. Well, let's put, we can put a low voltage in first, and we can look on the top of all the other low side MOSFETs, which effectively on the coil, and look for voltage. But well, because we're seeing the short here, we're not going to find any. But let's do it anyway, just, just to show how we would do that. And then let's try and inject some voltage into here and see if we can get something to get hot and trace the fault that way. If we can't get something to get hot, then we can use the method I used on the previous video with a millivolt meter. Okay, so let's connect this up to the uh, bench power supply and let's see what we've got. I'll just clarify, hopefully it was clear about this. In the case where you do have a short circuit high side MOSFET, the resistance you'll actually hit see from here to ground is actually the resistance of the load. Now if that's uh, like a modern CPU on a laptop motherboard, or if it's a modern GPU, that would look like pretty much zero, yeah? Otherwise, what you would actually see from here is not a short, you'd see the resistance of the load. Uh, it could be one at one ohm on the, like an, a sixth generation uh, i5, I measured one the other day, 
on the fourth generation it was about 20 ohms yeah the ram could be 60 90 it depends yeah so if it is a short circuit i'm at high side mosfet you'll only see a short from here to ground if the load is very oil resistance itself okay i just mentioned that so when you're injecting voltage into something like this to try to get something to warm up to trace a short one of the important things is that you actually have heavy leads basically yeah you need to use thick leads so these are quite thick cables because what will happen is the whatever voltage you inject from here from the power supply there will be a drop in the voltage across the cables and if the cables are not thick enough you can't get enough power into the board to warm something up so you need to use you know something like that uh, so i'm going to connect these on here so onto the yellow so i'll switch it on it's set to 1.2 volts let me just uh, put the camera a little bit near you can see so, yeah you can see that i think 1.2 volts yeah i'll make the window a little bit bigger as well actually without trying to block what we're doing okay so 1.2 volts in here as soon as i do this i've set this by the way on, on maximum so it's on five amps so it's going to inject five amps into the board so let's put the power on and let's see what actually happens well we have about five amps going in yeah we could actually remove the cpu but i'll leave it in there um so i don't instantly see anything getting warm which i have a good connection on here there we go because the current light has now come on the red light that supply is now supplying five amps i can't turn the voltage up anyway i cannot actually inject any more voltage because putting more voltage would give more current yeah and it's set to its maximum it won't give you more than five so actually i couldn't set the voltage any higher than that anyway okay so nothing's obviously getting hot let's have a look now to see if we have I'll use this uh, meter we can get into, into shot with the uh, camera let's put it here okay let's just have a look to see if we now have any voltage getting to these coils yeah so I'll just get the uh, meter leads let's see so there shouldn't be because of the way we were measuring it before so you can either turn it upside down, down go to the coil or you can just check on the bo top end of the, the bottom side sorry <laughs> the top end of the low side mosfets basically yeah i know that happens to go to the coils we measured it we've just measured it so we know yeah so there's no voltage getting in here no voltage getting in here as we expected because the short is on the other side yeah no voltage getting in in here so the short is definitely somewhere on the 12 volt side there's nothing coming through if you had a power supply that can deliver more power you can now safely turn that voltage up up to 12 volts because there's nothing coming through to the more sensitive components on the lower voltage rails yeah now that something's getting warm so something's getting warm here yeah something on the other side of the board something here is getting warm it's probably one of the most likely things to go short circuit are these little capacitors yeah now because this one's getting a fair bit of heat let's see if we can find it with a bit of alcohol so we'll take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol let me see if i can zoom this down right down yeah okay Well, we could use the technique of the finger yeah also if you look at it can you see that this capacitor here looks just slightly distressed maybe compared with the other ones it's quite often just a crack in the uh, component that causes it to go short so if i can drip, drip a bit of uh... yeah i think it sizzled actually i just need to find something to drip a little bit more alcohol on this is almost empty this bottle yeah can you see it sizzling you can probably hear it as well actually i'll tell you what we'll do we'll just disconnect the power 
I'll get some more alcohol in here. Um, I'll use a cotton wool bud. Let's find the cotton bud. There we go, cotton buds. Okay, find, find the cotton bud. We'll use this. And I'll use the, the smaller bottle. It's easier for me to get some uh, alcohol out of it. Just one moment and we'll have it ready. Okay, here's one I should have prepared earlier, as they say. So, I've now put alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, actually on the component, yeah? What, watch that component, that capacitor, and watch what happens when I, when I put the power on. Now I'll just find the power lead. Here we go. Right, let's watch it, let's see, let's see what it does. Yeah, you see it? Let's, let's do it again. Let's get a little bit more on there. Okay? Right, let's do it again. Ready? Go. You see straight away it's drying out there, yeah? It's still wet on the component next to it. So that's our short circuit component. So let's remove that from the board and then let's see what happens. See if the short circuit has gone, yeah? Let's see if it's gone. Okay. Because this capacitor was so close to here and I wanted to use hot air, like I tried to use a solder and I couldn't get it off. I was very concerned about this getting too hot, so I actually removed the capacitor first so I can more easily remove the short circuit one. So, if we have a look now on the resistance meter um, from ground, so one side of this is ground and the other side here is no longer short. Yeah, so that's definitely was a short circuit part. We can go to the top of these transistors. Yeah. Uh, Not to this one. Yeah, so it, there's no short there anymore. Now the capacitor, I don't know exactly what it is, um, but it's in parallel with this one. So it probably isn't very critical. I mean, I can just, if I can just get onto it. Yeah, it connects to there and it connects to the, there. So it's in parallel with the electrolytic, which is a 1000 microfarad, 16 volt. So if I put something, let me see what I've got in here that I can actually use to put in here. I mean, it's quite likely it's actually like a, a 0.1 microfarad. In fact, I think the easiest way actually, let's remove this one as well. And then let's measure the capacitance of this one and we'll know what we should stick in there, yeah? That's the way to do it. Okay, so I've taken the other one off the board. I've just got my capacitance meter. So let's have a look. Sort this. Can you get a connection onto it? It looks like it's it looks like it's probably a ten microfarad uh, capacitor, and I need to order some. Uh, the ones I've got are only good up to ten volt. Yeah, uh, it looks like it's a ten microfarad. Okay. A bit difficult to get a connection on it, but I did get a reading off it. It was reading about 10 up by the looks of it. So I haven't got any, but I've got some 4.7s. Uh, and since it's in parallel with the other large capacitor for now, I'm going to put a 4.7 in there. I really doubt very much how critical it is. So I'll, I'll fit this one back on and I'll fit a 4.7 uh, for the other one. Now let's see what happens there. Okay, so um, I've connected this all back up. This uh, board seems to have some other problem as well. I mean, it was just an old board I found lying around that I knew happened to have a short on it. So I didn't investigate any further. It is now powering up, so the short circuit's gone. You can see it, it, it's powering up. Uh, it seems very fussy about the type of memory you put in. Um, and I've tried a couple of different CPUs, but I'll show you, um, we just got the meter into shot as well. So the VRM now, the, uh, we can look at both the RAM and the, the CPU, so the memory VRM now has 1.5 volts, which is correct, and the CPU VRM now has 1.27 volts on, yeah, which for this sort of generation will be fine. So the short's fixed. Um, the motherboard apparently has some other issue, whether I'm really too 
bothered about that, to be quite honest, for an old socket 775, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if something stupid like the chassis fan isn't connected with it being a, a Hewlett Packard, actually. I will just try that one. Huh, yeah. Huh, yeah, good guess, actually. I've seen that, I've seen that before a number of times. So, uh, insert boot media. So, it is now, actually, uh, working. So, you have a different code on here as well, yeah. So, um uh, chassis fan uh, i just use an old cpu fan that happens to have a three-way connector and it came up straight away okay so in fact that is working now um so yeah i hope you enjoyed that um with a little little bit more about voltage injection i've been asked a couple of times i uh, hope you know now when it is safe uh, to inject voltage and what voltage to inject um yeah so uh, i'll see you all soon on another one guys uh, ciao for now